big one. <laughs> oh, got him on the swim jig. <laughs> that didn't take long. Maybe they just don't want to come up with a menace trailer. Not a bad one to start the day. Ooh. All right, guys, that was a, that was a nice fish. So. We're out here on Lake Headwaters and I'm swimming a jig around isolated trees and these fish are they're spawning and the water temperature is around 75 degrees and we got some overcast and I, I started out with a popping perch and not really committed to the top water so I, I picked up the swim jig with a with a striking menace on the back of it and and didn't take long to get that bite and I just I feel like they're just not really wanting to come up to the top to the surface and and feed and something a little bit lower in the water column is what they're looking for. And we fished all this stuff and didn't get bit. That one was on the ice, the last tree, closest to the deeper water, which is somewhere they can they can pull up quick, you know. And this is the first first piece of cover they came to. A lot of times the fish will, you know, when it's warmer and stuff, they they live in generally a little bit deeper water, or or try to get out of that some of that hot, you know. It's, it's so hot down here in, in Florida all the time that they they can't stay in a foot of water majority of their life because it'll be 95 degrees this summer so they, rel they relatively relate to deep water but they want to spawn in shallow water and they pick areas that that are a little bit easier or they migrate to areas that are easier points of access to the bank from deep water even on other lakes outside the country not just here in Florida um, but Florida, they tend to sit on the outside of some of the grass lines and stuff. Even though it's only two or three foot deeper out there, that's a big difference compared to a foot of water where it's 96 degree water temperature versus 80 um, in the summer, something like that. So <clears throat> that's just, they, they live in a little bit deep, deeper water, a little bit cooler water. It's more comfortable for them. And then uh, whenever it's this time of the year, they got one thing on their mind and it's to get shallow and, and get dirty. This place is a little different because it's got a lot of deep water real close to some shallow water, which is a little weird for a Florida fishery, you know? But when you go off and stuff like them big channel swings and anything like that, main creek channels where they come to the bank close to a shallower pocket, those are things that you would look for for them to come into first. Easy access points and then, then they'll progressively work their way to the very backs of some of the creeks and stuff to spawn. But depending on what lake you're on too. I mean, everything's kind of different. You can't just say that for all of them, you know? A swim jig for me is just a awesome all around search bait. Not for just in heavy cover in, in the grass, but even around docks and, and, and bank grass and stuff like that. You can, you can cover a lot of water with it and, and fish a lot of different zones of the water column. You can fish a lighter swim jig and fish it up in the water column, have your rod tip up and bouncing it and uh, catch those fish that are up higher in the water column. Or you can use a half ounce swim jig like I have here and I'm throwing it out there and kind of letting it fall to the bottom and just doing a straight retrieve with it. Um, and I can fish it closer to the bottom or actually on the bottom and get some of those fish that aren't gonna come up. and. Uh, there's just, I don't know, it's a very versatile bait that, that goes through any kind of cover really well, but uh, especially thick grass like we have here. And I fish it faster than, than typically a lot of people and I just straight reel it instead of doing a lot of the hopping. I will pop it every once in a while, I'll keep it up off the bottom, but I like a good straight retrieve. I don't know, something about a straight, steady retrieve in Florida just seems, seems to be better than a stop and go. Obviously, if you're dragging a worm or something, it's a little different, but on moving baits like a cricket or a, or a swim jig, I like a good constant reel, not not slowing it down and speeding it up because it's not so natural. It, something just going by at a na natural pace seems more natural to me for them to go after than something that's just darting around and jer you know, jerking and kind of doing non-natural things. I don't, I don't see bluegill flailing around all the time, you know what I mean? They, they kind of just move along at a certain pace and just make it look natural as you can. Anytime that I'm in a newer lake in Florida, I mean, just like everybody else, everything kind of looks the same. So you can 
waste a lot of time by by just fishing slow and slow in areas and being too thorough um you gotta locate better bottom you gotta locate better watercolor and stuff in a swim jig is just something that I can I can pick up and have confidence that I'm going to get bit if I get around some fish down here in Florida and, and it's something that I can I can feel the bottom I can feel the types of grass and I can break down some of what it looks like under the water with a with a swim jig just by what what it feels like softer bottom and harder bottom no grass versus a lot of grass and stuff like that so I it, it's and I don't get hung up in the process of doing that. So I can cover as much as I want freely. And uh, it just helps me break down new lakes and, and figure out what cover I need to be around. And once I start getting bit, I can switch up to something a little bit slower. Um, anything like a popping perch or a, or a ocho or anything like that. Like it's, I can really pick up area apart once I find that that's the area and that's the right setup, which watercolor, bottom, and good vegetation is, is the three main things you need down here in Florida. There's a big one. There's a big one. There's a big one. Get in here. <laughs> oh, and she can give me a present. Eating bluegill. Strike King Swim Jig. Strike King Rage Menace. Pretty much the same size. They do not like bluegill around their beds. And that's what that is, is a, is a baby bluegill. So digested you can't hardly tell, but that's what it looks like to me. I usually fish it on braid all the time, except for like around docks on a shad spawn or somewhere that's cleaner. 90% of the time I, I, I swim it on braid. I may drop down from 50 to, to 30 or something, but I try to stay with braid on a swim jig. Unless I'm, yeah, unless I'm around docks is mainly the only time. I guess maybe some, some bank grass that's real clean or something, but definitely a, a heavy cover application for me, and I'm always power fishing it. I don't really finesse fish it, but you can. It's a good bait to, to do that if you, if you want, but it's a good bait that you can just constantly power fish too. Obviously putting, just changing colors, you can change your forage. I mean, uh, from a crawfish, from a, to a bluegill being black and blue, a crawfish being like a green pumpkinish, and then a shad being a whitish of some kind of color. And it can cover any kind of forage on any kind of lake, but uh, today we're, we're down here in South Florida and, and we're mimicking bluegill. The water's darker down here, it's clean, but it's dark, so the, the bluegill are naturally darker, a green pumpkin to a, a, a blackish, you know, darker, darker look. So I use a darker color, using a little bit bigger profile trailer mimicking bluegill around spawners down here in Florida and, and uh, I mean that's just it's a it's a great way to match any kind of uh, forage that you're looking to to fish around I mean you just uh, you can change colors change skirts change sizes and fish it anywhere